First of all, let me start. So thank you everyone for coming. Um, my name is Joanna Bonnet. I work for a multinational recruitment company. Uh, you in the US would probably know me as Michael Page. Um, we are not a huge brand in, in the US, but we have uh, over 140 offices around the world and we do professional recruitment in each of the countries where we are. In addition to working for Michael Page or Page Group, Page Personnel, depending on how you know me as a brand, uh, I am also the founder of the Green Jobs Foundation, which is a global charity. We um, have been operating for a year and we are predominantly UK based at the moment, uh, but that is more about being practical in our first year of operations rather than the scope of our interest and our outreach and impact longer term. So let me just move into the first deck of slides, but please do tell me if um, you have, um, you, you can't see them uh, yeah, going forward. So for, oh, let me just drop this. So for today, I'm talking to you on behalf of the Green Jobs Foundation. And we're going to cover a couple of different topics. So how will climate change affect jobs? Uh, green engineers, because I believe most of you have an engineering interest or background, and also where to start looking for and start thinking about your own green skills. And I'm mindful that we also need to keep to time so you can also move on to your next um, session. So I think we've got about 20 minutes and I'll make sure that we also keep a couple of minutes for questions. So how will climate change affect jobs? This is the, the big the big level, uh, the high level. Um, broadly, because there is uh, no planet B, we, we need to fundamentally think very, very differently about jobs. This is probably no surprise to all of you, but it is a surprise to a lot of people that have been in the workforce for a very long time. So as companies, as uh, cities, as societies move forward and commit to the net zero plans, and as they start enacting those changes to transition to a green economy, it will fundamentally and at a global basic level will create a shift of at least 20% across all employment. Uh, that, that is a really big shift. And from an employment perspective, we've not seen that shift in skills and in jobs since the end of the Industrial Revolution and since the end of World War II. So there is going to be a massive change on the horizon within the job space and specifically because of green, uh, the greening of the workforce. Now, where we are perhaps different compared to the past is we will also be doing that as we have the impact of AI and um, the automotive industry uh, coming across and automating jobs uh, at the same time. So there will be a second fundamental shift that will be occurring at the same time. But today I'm only here talking about the greening of skills. So when we start talking about this big fundamental shift, there's actually a lot of differences underneath. So we uh, look at jobs uh, in three distinct different buckets. We look at emerging roles. So they are new roles using new skills that have not existed in the past. There are two different types of transitional roles. So the first one would be a someone with old skills in a new job. Um, and a good example of this would be someone that is perhaps in the carbon capture industry or going into the carbon capture industry. They may have very good extractive uh, skills uh, from say the oil industry. So they know how to pull the stuff up out of the ground or out of the seafloor. Um, they can actually reverse those skills relatively easily uh, to push the, the carbon capture um, uh, down at the, the same uh, wells. So from that perspective, that's a new job, but using old skills. The other type of transitional role is almost the reverse. So that is an old job but also using new skills. So an example of this would be an accountant. If you think of an, a traditional accountant, they uh, account for dollars, yen, pounds. Well, now and in the future, 
accountants will need to specialise in capturing carbon emissions. And so it's called carbon accounting. And so that's uh, the second type of transitional role. There are a third bucket of roles, and that is the sunset roles that will not exist in the future. So that is old skills with old jobs. And we need to help the people in that space uh, to either retrain entirely or to have social provisions for roles going for, uh, for, for their, um, their this job security going forward. So things like redundancy payments. Um, our, our view is that a green job is any job that directly or indirectly improves the environment and mitigates the effects of climate change. This is a fairly um, international uh, definition of green jobs, and it's aligned with the UN and the International Labour Organization, as well as the World Economic Forum. So very quickly, uh, from an engineering perspective, and some of you will know this, you will have seen this through perhaps the materials that you've learned through um, university and college, um, perhaps even through your high school education, that there are great skills um, for uh, engineers, um, I think engineering is going to be one of the professions going forward that will have a really good positive impact on climate change. And just a couple of examples here where you will be able to be thinking about whether it's products or designs um, and processes in a very different light to, to the organizations where you will be working. Um, from a school leavers perspective, who are looking at engineering degrees, our advice is uh, for, for you to become a, a, a green engineer would be to look at degrees that have a high level of sustainability in the course content that is available now um, here in the UK, for example, and this is more generally away from engineering, but in the UK about eight years ago, there were no sustainability degrees at all. Uh, in the UK, we now have over 120 degrees that are registered as a 50% or more high content of uh, sustainable thinking. That might be from a social purpose, and it certainly is also from an environmental purpose. So our, our questions for school leavers or people looking to re-engage with um, higher education, whatever that may be, to continually to push and look for and engage with the, the degrees um, and courses that have a high degree of sustainability. For those that are perhaps post-qualification or mid-year, thinking about a mid-year career change, um, we encourage everyone to look at your professional body. So if you happen to be an engineer, then or maybe an accountant or maybe a lawyer, to go firstly to the professional body that um, regulates your, your profession and to have a look at their ESG, their sustainability, their green or environmental training courses and qualifications. And presently, there are lots of these. And so um, you may be engaging with a local professional body or maybe an international professional body. And when I say international, I mean a global body, but equally there are just as many uh, professional courses that you can access overseas from various different bodies. So why and how would we be greening uh, our skills? Um, this is absolutely vital. Um, have a look at your current job if you are currently employed and to think about how you can improve the environment. Um, when we look at the professional engineering bodies, um, particularly here in Europe, they all have courses and qualifications with ESG content. And, and we'll come to that in just a moment. We also think that um, soft skills, um, and if you look at uh, LinkedIn and you, you follow LinkedIn heavily uh, for their career advice, you'll notice that the likes of LinkedIn, the likes of large multinational recruiters are now talking about a skills first agenda. And this is about how uh, thinking beyond your technical skills that you've learned, what soft skills do you need for the future? So things like analy analytical, creative and systems thinking, the a view of continuous learning, resilience, flexibility and agility. 
a, a willingness to engage and learn AI and technology, as well as having a very high level of service and customer orientation mindset. And we are seeing that coming through in job ads, but we are also seeing this coming through in the way uh, the future of work will be looking to engage with employees, particularly as AI and the greening agenda occurs. So this is a really practical session. And in a moment, I will turn off my share, my share screening. Uh, this is for you to get your phones out um, and to have a little look at the in, uh, of what's available in your area of interest. So here is an example on the screen. I've got three examples up. Two are from a um, Institute of uh, Chartered uh, in Engineers, and the other is from the Royal Academy of Engineers. Both of these happen to be UK focused. But what you're seeing on the screen is on the left at the top that there is a webinar to engage with uh, and this does help boost your skills it allows you to learn what is happening overseas a lot of these webinars are free to uh, to uh, attend so i would highly encourage you maybe not just the webinar here but have a look at your own professional body to see what webinars and virtual training you can engage with that are free. This will boost your skills rapidly. It will also allow you to think about, well, what types of engineering do you want to specialize in further? Um, with the, the view that it is free of charge, it will also allow you to then uh, perhaps put um, any financial investment in your own training to maybe a longer, more uh, deep dive course, which is the one on the right, for example. So this is professional development training of carbon management within infrastructure. So it's a highly specialized course. It is one day and it is virtual training. And the reason I have put this up is it also allows me to demonstrate to you that there are online options. So you don't have to always be in, I don't know, in your example, in New York or in LA, you could access this training no matter where you're based in the US and no matter what time commitments that you have, maybe outside of university or within your own family and home life. At the bottom on the left is perhaps something a little longer for you to, uh, to, to think about. This is actually a completely new qualification and it's a chartered environmentalist and it is through the engineering uh, Royal Academy here in the UK. Again, there will be local equivalents within the US, but I'm highlighting this to allow you to think that there are courses that are very relevant to the what you personally believe uh, with your values and your purpose of wanting to progress uh, to a much greener future, but also engage with your own career. So I'm going to shop, stop sharing my screen now, but as you start, please have a quick look on your phones and just have a look to see, okay, I thought that I would be engaging with X engineering firm, uh, uh, sorry, a professional quality uh, qualification body, and just start having a bit of a Google to see if you can find maybe some of these free webinars see if you can enroll on those, maybe some of these virtual courses or maybe a, a longer qualification. So they're just there for you to leave in your browser, your Safari, whatever type of phone you've got, for you to come back to later today for you to think about, well, actually, I am going to maybe look at this in more detail. Now, I'm going to turn now to what I'm seeing in the UK. Um, we have recently done a very large uh, project. Um, you can look this up on the Green Jobs Foundation LinkedIn page. So I encourage you all to sign up to, to follow our web page. We released a report last week. That report, when we'd started the data and the research, we didn't know where we would end up. We asked three very big questions to ourselves. Number one, could we find green jobs? And could we see that they were increasing at a rapid rate last year compared to prior years? Could we find green jobs in local communities? So they weren't all, um, in our case, in the UK, London centric. So in your case, it would be, say, all New York centric. Could we see them in the very rural communities that arguably need great jobs to go in? And the third 
uh, item that we wanted to see was could we demonstrate that green jobs were paid better than the traditional counterpart? So for those three items, we could find that we, uh, we, we found that green jobs in the UK represented 3% of all job adverts uh, in 2022. That actually represented a 43% increase of job green jobs that existed. So not even advertised, but the green jobs that existed in 2020. So we could see a over a period of two years, a rapid succession of green jobs being available. This was across all professions. So it wasn't just uh, green bankers doing green finance. It wasn't just engineers. It was right across all of the, the different professions. We could also demonstrate that the green jobs were going in local communities, in villages, in towns and in re regional cities. So not all um, London centric in our case. And we could absolutely demonstrate that green jobs were paid better than the traditional counterparts. And we thought that that was very important, particularly for those in rural communities where employment is arguably vital and sometimes very reliant on what might be classed as a very traditional heavy industry that is going to um, be more affected um, and harder to abate from a, a climate change perspective. So we found that this was very good news across the UK and it allowed particularly our communities on the lowest level of pay that they were able to get a better paid minimum wage role, uh, so what we class as the real living wage, compared to a minimum wage role. And so again, this was uh, really, really valuable for not only the UK government, but for uh, across business within the UK. I'm mindful that we're very close to being out of time and you need to get to your next session. So I'm wondering if you have um, maybe one or two questions that I could quickly answer. Um, I'm available in the chat um, or you're more than welcome to, to reach out to me separately after this session. So over to someone in the room, should you have any questions? If anyone has a question, feel free to just ask. We're unmuted so they can hear us. I think we're good. Okay. Right. So do reach out to me if you do have questions separately. I'm more than happy to answer them. Um, you can find me on LinkedIn um, under my profile name. It's really uh, really easy to find. Joanna Bonnet. There's one of me. Um, it's my profile picture. Alternatively, if you wanted to reach out through the Green Jobs Foundation, where we've got other people that can answer your queries, happy for you to reach out through the Green Jobs Foundation. Uh, again, there, there is only one Green Jobs Foundation on LinkedIn, and we We've got several um, uh, articles that are scheduled to go out. It's a relatively new foundation, as I said, so we haven't got a huge amount um, on there. But last week we released our first report. So I hope you find it valuable.